the five types of women who keep getting played. Are you wondering, are you in the category of becoming a target of men constantly taking advantage of you? Check this out. I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, this is the channel where we magnetize your man so that the man you want, desires, and most importantly, pursues you forever. Now, please like, share, and subscribe for more great free trainings like this to help you to attract the right man and relationship that you want. And of course, don't forget to listen to until the very end because I will have a surprising added bonus that will for sure tell you if you're in that category and how to break out of it. So let's go and dive right into the five types of women who keep getting played. Number five is the observe, absorber versus the observer. Okay, wow. <clears throat> how you want to think about when you are in a dating relationship, there's always one person that actually influences the other person and the other person absorbs, right? So if you are constantly absorbing the reality, the judgments, the words, the opinions of the other person, in this case, of course, your partner or the date that you're on right now, then you become the absorber, right? And of course, that is so easy to be manipulated, to be sabotaged, to be taken advantage of, right? Because you're so open. You're like a sponge, Right? And what you actually want to learn instead is that you are a screen, not a sponge. Right, So you want to actually be mindful of the boundaries that you set around yourself. Right, This is also a really good tactic to become what I call a narcissist repellent. Now, what do you want to become instead? Become an observer. So when you become an observer, you're able to gain perspective. You're able to actually step back and see, hold on a second, what is my reality? What is this guy's reality? You are no longer reacting. You're no longer over-identified with your inner child that wants to please him, that wants to be liked, who wants to get approval, right? And all of that, wants to get affection. But rather, you're able to step back, become the observer, and see things from the third-person perspective. Number four is the anxious one. Now, I studied, of course, um, attachment style theory at UC Berkeley, and we have an understanding there's three different main attachment styles, right? There's the secure one, the avoidant one, and the anxious one. Now, when you're in that anxious category, you're actually filling in the blanks. So what that does is it has you actually paint red flags green, right? You're actually saying, you know what, like he flirted with me. We had so much fun. He's very interested in me. So there's a lot of meaning making when you go on a date. However, the reality is that you had a coffee date, maybe for two hours, maybe you had a phone call for half an hour. And you actually didn't realize that's all what it was, right? That's all what it is. And so when you're in the anxious category, you go into what I call future anticipation land. Now, what does that mean? You already see yourself walking down the aisle with his name attached to your name, right? You already see yourself on a vacation with him. So in, uh, in short, you are actually not present with who is actually in front of you. You already decided, you already decided, you know, he is safe. He doesn't even have to fight for you. He doesn't even have to pursue you. You already decided that he's the one he's going to be in your future. And of course, that's not fair because you don't even know this guy, right? And so because of that, you're much more likely to get played. Again, what you want to do instead is you want to actually take a step back and actually see what actually happened. Look, when this happened to me in 2008, 2009, I was really talking to this guy, met him online on spiritual singles. He lived in Chicago at the time. And, you know, and we, it, I just felt like we've been in this relationship forever. We were talking and calling and texting and all the things. But the reality was like, once he stopped texting me and calling me, I was actually taking my calendar out and I actually made notes when we had the calls, how long they were, 
when he texted me how much time passed in between and found out, wow, I had put in just a lot of filling in the blanks without even noticing it. I actually realized, oh, I think I talked to him like five times in the last three weeks, something crazy like that. So it's really eye opening, which leads me to number three, which is the other focused woman. So what happens is if you grow up in a household where you have at least one emotionally unavailable parent, like a parent who doesn't meet your needs, a parent who doesn't give you the hug that you desire to have, a parent who maybe even diminishes and belittles your emotions, one of your strategies can become other focused, right? So no, I can't focus on myself because when I focus on myself and my needs, they're not going to get met. But if I actually learn to read the other person's need, then I get the approval, then I'm being liked. Now, it's not the same as exactly getting my needs met, but it's somewhat close to that. So you adopt the strategy. However, that makes you easily manipulatable, right? Like, like a narcissist or like any man who has ill intentions and is a player could easily guilt trip you because you question your reality all the time. They could also easily gaslight you as well because you're so focused on their happiness, right? You're not even saying, am I enjoying the state, right? So I remember when I broke through this pattern, I was on a date with a guy who was a history professor and he was really as dry as history, although history is not really dry, but he made it really dry. And I was so focused because I was so other focused, like wondering, does he like me? I wonder if he's going to ask me out on another date, la, la, la. And then actually he realized, wait a minute, do I actually want to have another boring date like this? No, I don't. So I actually realized, wait a minute. So I need to actually ask myself, is this actually what I really want? You know, what do I actually really want? Like, am I enjoying my date with this guy, right? Do I feel that my needs are being met? So that's going to help you to become more self-focused. Number two is the self-doubter. Now, this reminds me of a reality show that I watched, which is called Mill Joe Millionaire. And there was this particular woman. She was constantly doubting herself. Now, this guy was actually interested in her. Like, like actually, interestingly enough, it was the millionaire, right? Who was interested in her. But she doubted herself so much that he to constantly console her, constantly tell her, no, I am interested in you. You are attractive. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Right? And so she was doubting herself all the time. Now, she was lucky that this was actually like a good guy, although he ended up sending her home because he got sick and tired of having to prove to her why she is so amazing. Right? Like he, told, he gave her a compliment and she questioned it. However, if a man who is a player comes into your world and you're doubting yourself, right? He's going to be like, oh, perfect. I can feed right into that. I can make her doubt herself even more. Or I can use that against her when we're in an argument, when I don't get what I really want, right? Oh, perfect. I can guilt trip her. So what you want to do instead, you want to actually see what are you good in, right? When you doubt yourself, you have generally low self-confidence. And what you want to do, you want to actually find all the reasons why you can do something. Find something that you are good at, right? Maybe you're talented in something. Maybe you are you know, you, you want to meet the right man for you, obviously, that's why you're watching this channel, and then make a case why, why you're going to meet that man, right? Maybe you're going to say, because, um, because I watched Antje's podcast, you know, and I watched her YouTube channel, and I went to TikTok and checked out and all the things, right? And, you know, I go on dates once a month or once a week or whatever. So you create more and more evidence why you can actually experience and have what you desire to have. So try that out and also like validate the self-doubter because the self-doubter is there because the self-doubter is saying, well, you know what? In the past, you didn't follow through, right? In the past, you uh, broke your commitments. In the past, you did procrastinate. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I get this, right? That's why the self-doubter is there. It's like reminding you it's a reality check, but it doesn't mean that it has to continue this way. 
And finally, number one is the rescuer. Now, this is interesting. This can sometimes happen in dysfunctional households. This can sometimes happen if you have an alcoholic parent. Also, if you are the firstborn, um, if there's any illnesses in your family, you became the rescuer, right? Because the thing is like you couldn't rescue yourself because you're too little. You're you're too little, right? And it's 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 like very scary if your parent is breaking down in tears. You know, I had like this one story of this one client who told me that um, that the parent was breaking down in tears on the phone, and in that moment, right, like that little one decided to become the rescuer and consolidate. You know, I've actually seen this on Jimmy Kimmel. Um, I ate your Halloween candy. It says the you know he does this every year, and what was really interesting. And you guys, you really want to watch things in different ways. So, what ended up happening is like the woman, uh, the mom told the son, "I ate your Halloween candy," because the premise is they're telling the kids that they ate the Halloween candy, and then the kids you know have all kinds of reactions towards that, and the parents justified or not. And so in this particular case, the mom was so emotionally manipulative, right? She's like, I'm so sorry. Um, I was so hungry and I ate all your Halloween candy. And then, and then he said, oh, it's okay, mom. Don't be sad. That's a rescuer right there, right? This is not a good sign because that little one decided my needs are not important. I was actually looking forward to my Halloween candy. Although, you know, I'm not really, again, I am really not in favor of candy, but um, but it's just a symbol of needs, right? So, you know, I was excited to have my Snickers or my M&Ms, you know, after dessert uh, to find out, oh, I'm not going to get mad. Oh, immediately I'm going to shut my needs off. I'm going to freeze them. I'm going to numb them. And instead, I'm going to pacify my parent, right? That's the rescuer. Now, when you play that out in a relationship, you will attract players into your life because they will use it as to their advantage right they will actually say oh you know what i i didn't have that kind of childhood you know and i'm i'm working on myself you know i'm really trying to overcome uh my alcoholic tendencies or my abusive tendencies and you know i'm doing the best i can and you know so they kind of like drop into sort of that little child energy because they know that da -da -da -da, the rescuer rushes right in it's like i got it don't worry about it i got you so what you want to do instead in, in order to shift that and that's what i work with my women on is learning to rescue yourself it's not about rescuing other people in that moment you actually need to be with your helplessness and with your powerlessness now before we go into the bonus of this particular video which i'm super excited to present to you guys is what kind of women get played in your opinion what have you seen your girlfriends your neighbors your co-workers we all have stories comment below let me know and maybe i put another video on like that with even more types of women so lastly for those of you who stayed until the very end the woman who doesn't listen to her intuition will also be getting played now, what is really interesting is that we are actually accumulating, our unconscious is accumulating information constantly. And that then translates into intuition, right? So it remembers, wait a minute, that vibration, how that guy spoke, or what he just said, that reminds me of something that happened when I was five, that's unconscious, right? But the intuition is saying, mm, there's something off here, something what he says, what he does, and what he thinks is not in alignment. Now, you can't prove that, but you just feel there's something off in your gut. Something just doesn't smell right. Like something smells fishy. That's sort of like that intuitive, that instinctual nose, right? And when women don't listen to that, again, they paint a red flag screen and actually telling themselves, I'm just probably going to make this up or, I, you know, he's like, you know, this is like, yeah, he probably just has a bad day today, right? Like, we're just going to see how that continues. I could be totally wrong and then I'm going to be embarrassed and no, I'm not going to, you know. So if you don't listen to your intuition, you know, research actually shows. I see this all the time with my women too, but also research confirms that, right? That women actually knew when they end up getting divorced, you know what? When I walked down the aisle, I did have this like really 
weak sense in my stomach. Like there's just, just mm. you know, when I signed that, uh, that, that contract, you know, to co-own a car with my partner, I just, I just, oof, something just didn't feel right. Right. But I followed through with it anyways and fell flat on their face. Now, if you want to discover a 30 second trick on how to make any man desire you, then hop on over to triggersdesire.com or simply pop into the description as well. And if you haven't done so already, watch next. When a man deeply loves you, he will start saying these five things. Lots of love to you, ladies, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye bye.